Hello, it's Gresky from Code Orange Gaming in the Adopt World of Worship clan. We set up Adopt to be a good place for people to learn how to improve uh, their gameplay at World of Warships, to find people to division with, to just overall become a better player, learn more about the game. What I wanted to do is uh, create a few video guides that might help people just learn some of the basics. Um, I'm not a super Unicum player or anything like that. I strive to be, but I can always improve my gameplay. One of the things I want to do to help people uh, learn more about the game or just generally get better is just kind of understand some ships. The Atlanta is one ship that I think is really underperforming, and I don't think it's actually at fault of the ship's stats or the ship's abilities. I think a lot of people just struggle like knowing what to do, knowing what to position themselves, struggle to build their captain. Um, it's a ship that the average damage on the server is only 26k. I, I think that's uh, pretty pretty low for what the ship can really do. There's been many times where I've had games, uh, you know, 100k plus, um, generally easily too, you know, it's, it's not a super hard ship. The, the most important thing is just positioning and building out the right captain, I think. Th those are like the two biggest things any player could learn. And I struggled with the Atlanta for so long, so I, I hope uh, I hope this will help some people. Uh, I'll leave a link in the, the uh, description to join the Adopt uh, Discord. Uh, we're willing to help anybody that uh, want, you know wants to improve or just looking for people to division with. Um, so right here I have my, my captain build, and I uh, it's a full 19-point captain, as you can see. I started off with priority target. This is good for any ship in the game, pretty much. You you, you need to know how many people are looking at you. Sometimes, uh, if, if you got a good angle on a bunch of ships or a good broadside, you can keep firing. If you know nobody's looking at you, you can keep doing what you're doing. Uh, then you see yourself get targeted. You you need to maneuver, get to get behind an island, uh, you know, conceal, and get away from the fight. Preventative maintenance is uh, another skill that I think is pretty good on the Atlanta, just to help keep the you know, modules and everything else in your ship alive longer as possible. Adrenaline rush is another uh, another skill that I think is really good on any ship in the game. Just helping your DPM go up is always a good thing, uh, especially in Atlanta since it's kind of lightly armored. You, if you take a shot. Uh, or a couple of shots and uh, you get behind an island to safety and you're you're firing from cover this could be really good as long as you're not getting targeted you're gonna just be spewing out shells like crazy it's it's pretty insane i've been really low health and uh, i just hold down the mouse button and it's like you, you just never stop firing it, it's like having a submachine gun my my next stat or my next uh, captain skill is basic firing training and this one could be argued easily to be demolition expert, actually ran demolition expert for a long time to increase my fire chance. I saw a few more CVs in queue, so I thought basic firing training is a good way to help protect myself against that. Also, uh, because this has 127 millimeter guns, it does increase uh, your reload. So just having extra DPM is, like I said, always a good thing. Again, you really could go with demolition expert I, I don't use the AA module, so I use BFT to kind of mitigate my AA damage to, to help increase that since I don't use that module. Uh, the number one skill for your fourth captain uh, point is advanced firing training. I would I would actually pick that over concealment expert. Again though, concealment expert's always another one of those skills that's good on any ship in the game. You You can't go wrong with it. AFT though, because the Atlanta's default range is 11 kilometers, you really need that little extra bit of, bit of range, especially if you're going to be not wanting to be even detected the whole game. If you play it right, for the most part, concealment shouldn't matter a whole lot. Of course it does. I've been, I've paid that price for getting spotted when I, you know, shouldn't have if I had concealment expert and I, I got uh, sunk because of that. Generally though, I think AFT should be your first skill. To, to get at the level four. The the other one I think is another required is IFHE. It's, it, it'll boost your damage like crazy and because the Atlanta has 127 millimeter, 
you only get the minus 1% chance to your fire uh, by each shell. Uh, you could, again, add that with the uh, Demolition Expert to, to negate that, and you are okay. But, again, I, I think this one's necessary. This and AFT I actually did first. Uh, and by the end of it, I got Concealment Expert with my last four points uh, before I got a 19-point Captain. And it did, it did well for me overall. For modules on the Atlanta, I chose Propulsion Modification 2. I feel this is better than steering gears. You're typically going to be behind islands a lot, and if this, uh, you realize you're getting flanked and the situation calls for it, you need to move and you need to be able to accelerate quickly to get out of there. Usually when I play Atlanta and I'm caught out in the open where I would need steering gears to you know, dodge shells or get around quickly, uh, get around a corner quickly, it, I've usually already made a mistake and I'm going to pay for it. I prefer using Aiming System Modification 1 to have that uh, better dispersion of my shells. If a battleship's uh, near my max range, I want to be able to land as much as possible, start fires. A gun modification is actually a really good choice as well. The A on the Atlanta is really good. If, uh, if I see a lot of carriers, I'll switch to this. I really would recommend this if you see a lot of carriers over aiming system, but because I don't, I, I prefer aiming system. If I'm going to be divisioning with a carrier, I will equip this. Or, you know, if I'm seeing a trend of a lot of carriers, I will definitely equip it. Uh, I prefer a damage control system. Uh, just that little re uh, reduction to risk of uh, uh, flooding and risk of fire can be really useful. Uh, the Atlanta, you're typically behind islands, and occasionally you'll get a ship who can just barely you know, see it so they can land a couple of shells and you start a fire or two, that could be really bad. Um, just, you know, taking that little bits of damage can eat away quickly at the Atlanta. Um, and again, typically you're not gonna need these because you should just be behind an island, not really taking damage. And I prefer main armaments uh, modification one here, just because the Atlanta can have its turrets get knocked out and uh, you need uh, to be able to do quick damage, especially if there's a destroyer near you. You need to have as many turrets available as you can and uh, uh, you know just to help you survive. So this game I chose is not particularly impressive. It's I'd say you know about the average game in an Atlanta. I, I chose to you know pick a game that isn't like a, my damage record or anything like that just because I want to show what an average game in the Atlanta could be. As I mentioned earlier that NA server damage average is 26k, or right around there it kind of fluctuates. I, I think that's super low. The, the ship can do a lot of damage really quick, and I'll, I'll show an example of that. You know, within the first few minutes of the game, I, I got close to you know 40k, or actually got over 40k damage, and I don't feel like that's anything overly impressive. And you know, it's all about positioning. I, I moved myself uh, right here because I, you know, it is uh, epicenter. So I want to get into a place where I can, of course, support the objective, which is to get into the middle of the cap, and you know, either deny points, keep the enemy team off, or just you know, sink the enemy team so uh, we can win. And what I wanted, why I chose this island right here, is because if you look at it, it's right. In the middle of the map, it's close. You know, the Atlanta only has 13.3 kilometer range. You can't rely on staying far away to minimize the damage done to you. So I chose right here so I can go hide behind this island. I can shoot shells over it. And my radar is also useful in the middle of the cap. I, I feel like this is a pretty good spot for this map. It is kind of aggressive. I do tend to play the Atlanta a bit aggressive. Um, I, I think that's how the ship should be. It's I view it as a area denial ship in a lot of ways. And what I mean by that is I just want to keep the enemy team either away from a cap or away from a flank. You know, say this were domination, I can go park by an A, B, or C cap where there's good cover, and I could just keep firing shells. If battleships are coming at me, they're going to be moving kind of slow, and I'm just going to rain fire on them. If a destroyer comes close to me, I have that high rate of fire that is just going to do a lot of damage to the destroyers really quick. And as you can see right here, this New York chose poorly and is moving towards me instead of towards the island cover. 
I don't know if he saw a bigger threat, probably in our Gade, or, or what it is, but he's just melting under my fire right here. I am just raining down shells on him, and as you can see from my angle, there's really nothing he can do about it. He's not really aiming at me from what I can tell. Um, prior to targets not going off, I'm not even spotted anymore. He can't do anything about this. He's, he's just stuck accepting this. Um, if I were him, I'd probably be turning out right now, headed to safety, hiding behind one of those islands, but he's determined to get in the cap for whatever reason. Um, so I'm going to take advantage of that. And any World of Warships player that's good will tell you, you want to stay alive as long as possible. In this game, sometimes it's worth, you know, not doing some damage to just live. Somebody, you know, once told me, I don't know if it's from a random Reddit comment or another World of Warships YouTuber or something, but you view your health as aggression points. In the early bit of the game, you don't want to be overly aggressive. You want to be alive to help your team down the line. And that's kind of how I play the Atlanta. I want to use my sort of aggressive tendencies to deny a cap, but there is a huge difference of the balance of being aggressive to keep the enemy back, and then there's being way too aggressive. I, I don't think Atlanta should be a ship you would ever use to go cap a point. Uh, I see that sometimes in random games when there's an Atlanta who runs in the middle of a cap with no island cover and just gets destroyed. Uh, the Atlanta shouldn't be really doing that. It should have a destroyer or another cruiser or something uh, that it's supporting getting into a cap. Of course, there are times you should move into a cap with Atlanta. I'm not saying you should never cap with it. It is definitely, you know, it, you got to read the situation and learn how to read the situation, and that, that's that's difficult to do. Um, and as you can see right here, five minutes into the game, I've already done 45k, and it keeps going up. That's you know, I'm I'm getting close to double the server average. It's it, it's not very hard to do that, as you can see. I've just kind of sat behind a rock and just rained down fire. You know, of course, I had that, you know, New York just moved straight in the middle of the cap, but, you know, in the end of it, it 26k is, is not a whole lot of damage done. And one of the things I, I like to do, and, uh, you know, I, th I think is really important, is sometimes you don't need to get all of your turrets onto the enemy. I, I think sometimes you can be perfectly okay just having your back turrets. Like here, if I would move backwards to go shoot the uh, uh, hood, I would be completely broadside to him, and that wouldn't be good. I want to minimize the amount of damage I can take. And right here, I kind of even screwed up, didn't pay enough attention to my mini-map, which is a very important thing in the Atlanta. I'm getting flanked by two cruisers and a destroyer right now. That, that's not good for me. Um, right now, I'm not firing because I thought I could outrun the Degrasse. Uh, I obviously can't. That's a French cruiser. He's gonna, he's gonna beat me in a race every single time. I, at this point, I'm just trying to dodge shells. I realize he's not going to be catching up to me soon. Uh, you know, he's, he's sorry. Uh, I realize he's uh, gonna keep a, no, uh, he's gonna keep up with me. And now that Kamikaze is sending torps at me, I'm broadside to two battleships. This is not looking good for me. And this is why Atlanta is not good in open water, you should always be hiding and pay attention to your mini-map. I it's, it's a mistake I sometimes make, still to this day. Um, especially in a ship like this where you fire so fast, it's easy to just do what I'm doing right now and just lock into a target and just watch to keep a constant stream of shells. You know, you want to keep doing that damage, but again, you want to stay alive. I do a thing where I like to drive by the mini-map and you can kind of see, just avoid big obstacles like, hey, there's you know an island here, there's a you know ship there. You don't want to go hit them. And right here, Atlanta is kind of starting to shine. It, I'm not actually being focused, even though I should be. The enemy team kind of messed up here. You know, they're they're not shooting me. They they really should be. And because of that, this Pensacola is gonna get punished for it. I got some help with my Fiji. I didn't want that Pensacola to load AP. He could have wrecked me. He could have really done a lot of damage to our our Fiji on my team. I, I don't want to do that. I want to keep my team alive as much as possible and, again, not take da uh, take a whole lot of damage, but I don't want to confuse that with being too passive. You know, I keep saying that because I feel sometimes people are way too aggressive. This game is sometimes just about patience and positioning, and you really got to learn how to you know, balance those two. And that's a really hard thing to do, and that comes with experience. And 
you know, it's all about like measured aggression, I guess. And right now, this uh, Degrasse is still not shooting at me. He could do some damage, so I feel confident to swing out and give him all my guns. He had plenty of other targets, and he was going to die soon. He had, you know, a few battleships shooting at him. And right here, I kind of also make a mistake that I don't, uh, I don't follow my own rule where I keep my ship pointed out. As you can see earlier, I parked behind that island, and I kept my ship pointed towards my team. That way, I could run to them if something happened, which it did. We got flanked. I was able to just hit the W key and move forward. And right here, you know, as you can, um, you're about to see, I, I get lucky. Um, I'm not pointed away from them, so right now my idea is to go behind this island and shoot at the hood or the barn, and here comes these torps. I'm about to take one. Oh, I got lucky. You you can't really, you know, count on that to happen. And right here, I'm also doing something kind of stupid where I sh should have probably held my fire. And before I shot, I wasn't spotted. I should have held my fire, gotten to a better position, and then opened fire. But, you know, I, I again, I get lucky. I, you know, I'm not really being targeted. The Byron... Is, I believe is targeting me. I, don't, I think the hood would be targeting me, but he's not turning his turn, so maybe it's the Shinonomi. I don't know why he'd be targeting me. Um, also could be the Nagato over there. Uh, I have been ignoring that Byron. He probably was more of a priority target to me, and I also make a mistake here, and I turn broadside to him. But again, because it's German dispersion, I just get lucky. I should be hiding a little bit more behind the island. As you can see right now, I'm no longer spotted. And this is one of the things the Atlanta struggles at a little bit, is shooting at targets far away. And it, because it's so fast at reloading, you can kind of, you know, adjust your aim as you go. And it's really easy to dodge these shells if you're being attacked by an Atlanta. As long as you're not close up, you can really just adjust your speed, change direction, and really avoid most of the shells. Right now, this Byron is, is doing that decently well. Um, also, I think I screwed up a few of the shots here. I, I can't, you know, get a get a lead on where exactly he's going and how fast he's going. And he's, he's doing a good job of that. And I think it's important to watch what you could be doing better. I think any player could take some time out and watch their own gameplay and really learn a lot from it. Normally I wouldn't even bother shooting at a T-22 or any destroyer that far away. I'm really not going to hit him because there's only a few people left on the enemy team. I want to just make sure I do whatever damage I can to him. They're, they're all basically Hail Mary shots. A destroyer left alive is going to be bad for my team. He could, you know, torp me, torp a battleship, take a cap. You, you want to get rid of any destroyer as fast as possible. They, they are very deadly. And right here, you can see the hood is overextended himself a lot. He really got trapped by our team. He has nowhere to go. He's starting to target me, so I really want to get rid of him as fast as possible. And my, uh, my team lends the help to accomplish that quickly. And one of the nice things about Atlanta is when you have Concealment Expert, uh, con your detectability range drops to 8.5. And that is pretty useful. Um, as you can see, or I'm sorry, it actually drops to 9.4. I was reading the long, long, uh, wrong line. And uh, so you're, you're detected at 9.4, and 8.5 is your radar range. So generally, if you're detected, you can probably radar it. And I noticed here that our cap was being contested, so I know the Shinomi was in the middle cap somewhere, so I waited to extend my radar to... Uh, I waited until my radar covered the whole middle of the cap. As you can see, now he's out of the cap. It's no longer being contested. He's still being radared, and I'm just going to fire whatever I can at him. And most of the time, if I'm ever spotted in the Atlanta, um, 
same rule is or same concept applies to Des Moines where the detectability and radar range isn't that far off. Uh, I, I usually wait until I've been spotted for you know a few seconds to make sure they're just not like just dipped into my detectability range and they're already on their way out. I, I want to make sure that the radar is going to be useful. Especially in the Atlanta, the radar doesn't last very long. Um, you want you really want to make use of it. So I'll wait to see to make sure it's going to be a good radar. As you can see right now, I'm spotted. Had I, you know, had a radar available, I, you know, could radar him and he would be detected and we could end this game. But I used it already. In, in any situation where you're hunting a destroyer and you're spotted, you want to adjust speed and uh, direction as often as possible to try to throw off their torpedoes. Any, if, if you keep going the same speed in the straight line, the destroyer will get torps on you. It, it's not, you know, it, it's the easiest thing you could do to minimize damage is be on the move and always be changing direction. And that, that goes for too, if you see a battleship in the distance, you don't want to sail in a straight line at the same speed. They're going to line up their shot, and you're just going to take a lot of damage. But I hope you enjoyed watching this video. I'm going to do a few more of these on just general basics on how to play certain ships and focus on certain aspects such as positioning and uh, you know general gameplay of ships that some people struggle with that... Uh, you know, again, these aren't for to make somebody a super unicum player. It's more for the players that were or just got the ship or just starting out. Maybe you even want to watch these to learn how to, you know, uh, counter that ship a little bit better. If you know what a ship's thinking, you're going to be able to make the situation in your favor. Thanks for watching, and please subscribe for more videos like this that will be coming in the future. And do not forget to go to the Adopt Discord to division with us. And uh, if you're looking for help, it's a great place to go. Have a great day.